The Memphis Grizzlies and Los Angeles Lakers are on a rivalry, but I'm going to tell you why the Grizzlies are treating them like one. And then two, Zach Eady, after he had this great phenomenal game, only played 15 minutes against the Lakers. And I don't think it was a bad decision. Just hear me out. Coming up here on Locked on Grizzlies. You are Locked On Grizzlies, your daily Memphis Grizzlies podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's going on, everyone, and welcome back to Locked On Grizzlies. I am your host today, DeMichael Cole, beat writer at the Commercial Appeal right here in Memphis, Tennessee. Thank you guys for tuning in to Locked On Grizzlies with me each and every day. Today, I'm going solo without my co-host, Joe Mullinex. Uh, so thank you guys for tuning in with us on today. And, and remember that your favorite podcast now has a newsletter as well. Introducing the Locked On Grizzlies Daily Newsletter is the one-stop shop for ultimate team and league coverage. Delivered right to your inbox. Sign up for free right now at LockedOnDaily.com. That's LockedOnDaily.com. And start your day with the all-new free Locked On Grizzlies newsletter. So make sure you go take advantage of that Right now, today's episode is also brought to you by FanDuel. You can start the season with a big return on FanDuel. New customers can place a $5 bet, and you'll get started with $150 in bonus bets if you win your first $5 bet. Visit FanDuel.com right now to get started. We're going to get started in today's show talking about the beatdown that the Memphis Grizzlies put on the Los Angeles Lakers 131-114 to uh, win. Uh, a lot of Grizzlies players played played well in this game. You know, uh, John Morant was good before getting injured. We'll talk about that a little bit uh, later. Uh, Jaron Jackson Jr. had 20 points. Santi Aldama, another double-double. I mean, he's he, – look, if you're still sleeping on Santi as a rebounder right now, him at the three with his ability to rebound, it has been pretty evident so far. 11 points, 12 rebounds there. Jalen Wells, we'll talk about him later in the show as well. 20 points. John Morant had 20 uh, Zach Eady had 8.7 rebounds, 15 minutes off the bench. You got Jake LaRavia with 13 points, five boards, eight assists, just stuffing the stat sheet. Scotty Pippen, you know, uh, he, he keeping it going, 14.6 rebounds, four assists. Basically, a lot of different players, Jay Huff, Brandon Clark, Luke Kennard, made his season debut. So many contributors to this game. But we're going to focus in in this first segment, uh, particularly on John Morant because of uh, I talked about it yesterday uh, as we were talking about uh, some some storylines going into this game. And I said, Grizzlies players, if you remember, shout out to the everydayers. Because you, you, you tune in every day, you probably saw this sequence happen in the game. And you already knew what was going on. Because I said it yesterday, Grizzlies players were not pleased last season when LeBron James and the Lakers came to town in Memphis and LeBron's doing the windmill dunk right in front of that Grizzlies bench with Desmond Bain, John ja Morant, Luke Kennard, Vince Williams, a bunch of injured. All those guys were injured and pretty much in street clothes. All those guys could only just sit over there and watch. And LeBron's laughing in their face, smiling in their face. And, again, you know, I mentioned that, you know, uh, Desmond Bain gave him a push at one point. John Morant gave him a push after the windmill, the windmill dunk uh, that I just mentioned. Those dudes didn't take that kindly. And if you've been watching the Grizzlies for a while now, uh, you know that there isn't a starstruck bone in these dudes' body. Like, it's it's kind of the good part about them in a way in terms of uh, when they approach, approach a game against a guy like LeBron James. Uh, it, it, I guess the best way to put it is, you know, they respect what he's done for the game, but all that goes out of the window when they're on, when on the floor. They don't care anything about that. So – Another example has kind of formed in, in this in this most recent game, and the sequence that we saw happen late in the second quarter. It was when uh, John ja Morant drove to the basket, had Gabe Vincent on him, uh, got an and one, shot it over the top of him, did the you know the famous too small gesture in the NBA, lowering his hand to the ground, basically saying the defender on me is too little. So then LeBron James gets an isolation against uh, John ja Morant, and John ja Morant said he felt like it was a charge and. If you look at the play, he did kind of bulldoze over uh, Ja, but, you know, 6'8", 250, big guy. Uh, LeBron James bulldozes over, over uh, Ja, gets the layup, and he does the two small celebration right in front of Ja Morant. And uh, 
Grizzly teammate helps helps job and he's laughing. And I'm knowing no, this isn't the end of it. Because this is this is John Morant we're talking about here. And that history uh, component that I mentioned uh is is also a factor there. And then the history even goes deeper than that if you want to factor in the playoffs and all that stuff uh from a couple years ago, 2023 playoff series. But anyways, John Morant comes up the floor, uh it makes a, a bank shot over another Lakers player. It wasn't even over LeBron James. And LeBron James is about to get the inbound pass. LeBron and Ja literally runs over to where LeBron is, gives him a nice little shove, little bump in his back. LeBron moves a little bit. Referees see it. Technical foul on Ja Morant. Ja said in that moment he was trying to, you know, uh, he was firing his teammates up. But in addition to saying that, he said a whole bunch more. He talked about the fact that, again, what I mentioned as part of the uh, the thing from last year, Ja said he didn't like that. These guys came on our floor uh, and taunted us and things like that. He pointed that out himself as well as, you know, the fact that the Grizzlies, you know, weren't healthy, you know, at the time. And the Lakers weren't healthy in this game. And then the Grizzlies weren't either. You know, Desmond Bain uh, was out. Anthony Davis were out. So a lot of injuries uh, were in this game. But – Several notable quotes from John Moran in this one. And one of them, I don't back down from nobody. I don't care who you are. My job was was to come back. I got my bucket, and I set the tone. My teammates fed off of it, and you see what happened. And what happened was, a, you know, a big-time Grizzlies victory. But John Moran straight up said, you know, um, I don't like them, referring to the Lakers. And as to why he said he doesn't like them, you know, he mentioned the fact that the Lakers put them out of the playoffs. He mentioned, you know, the fact that, again, the Lakers players, referring to LeBron James uh, for the most part, he said they came on our floor and beat us on our home floor, was laughing, playing, looking at me, talking. And he said my message to them was I was in street clothes. So this time John Moran wasn't in street clothes. And I'm telling you what I said at the top about this, this isn't a rivalry. Like it, we, I don't want any Lakers fans to come on here, get things twisted like, Warriors fans uh, used to do early on in the, in that sequence, but the Warriors Grizzlies thing started to to me at least feel like a button rivalry because you had the Grizzlies who beat the Warriors in the play in series, and then the Warriors come back and beat them in a you know competitive second round series, and then they get mashed up against each other on Christmas uh, the following season. So there were a lot of storylines uh, going on there, in addition to. You know, everything happened in between the lines of Dylan Brooks, Gary Payton, uh, you, you know, Steve Kerr and Grizzly broke the court. All, all these different storylines factored into, you know what, this really feels like a rivalry. Like these teams just aren't fond of each other. This one doesn't feel the same way. This feels just like the, the Grizzlies just, they don't like the Lakers. John Morant said he doesn't. And if you were watching on the uh, the FanDuel Sports Network broadcast, Scotty Pippen Jr., who had a solid game, was getting interviewed after the game. And Desmond Bain, who's another player, has been a little bit vocal, you know, about, you know, uh, the competitiveness when it comes to playing against the Lakers, uh, basically goes over there, interrupts uh, the interview between Scottie Pippen Jr. and uh, the FanDuel Sports Network and calls LeBron James old. You know, he didn't say LeBron James by name, but it was very clear who he was talking about because – Here's what he said. He said, y'all seen the way he snatched the ball, referring to Scottie Pippen Jr. Y'all seen the way he snatched the ball from that old man over there? And that's what Scottie Pippen Jr. did in the fourth quarter. He snatched the ball from LeBron James. So I guess that's the old man over there, the 39-year-old, who is actually, yeah, the oldest player in the NBA. So, uh, you know, not not a lot of love lost between these two teams. Even Jaron Jackson Jr., who, you know, he's not really the trash talker that Desmond Bain and John ja Morant you know, have come to be in their uh, 10 years in the league. It's a little bit different uh, with Jaron, but even he acknowledged that, um, you know, that Lakers series, that playoff series is not something uh, that's lost on the Grizzlies. He said, you know, the playoffs left a bitter taste in our mouths. He said, any team we play in the playoffs, win or lose, is just forever beef. It's forever beef. Uh, they're never going to be too kindly, too friendly uh, when they see the Lakers. So uh, that's just what it is. I think that's the way this game played out. And you know what? They see them in another week. I'm going to be looking forward to that game simply because 
maybe uh, Rui Hachimura, who missed this game because of illness. Anthony Davis could potentially be back. But even on the Grizzlies side, a guy like Desmond Bain. Uh, we'll learn more about Ja Morant, uh, and I'll end this segment there since we're talking about Ja. We didn't get much, you know, uh, on his right hamstring injury. He left the game, if you weren't watching, in the third quarter. Um, a foul should have been called. It was kind of clear to me, and and Ja pretty much uh, was very uh, – Disappointed, I'll say. <laughs> Disappointed after the game and the fact that a foul wasn't caught. I even talked to Jake Laravia, who threw the alley oop pass to Ja, ja Morant when Ja jumped into the air. Uh, he believed that Ja was undercut. And if you look at it, um, yeah, Ja hit the ground pretty hard, injured his hamstring. He spent uh, most of the game over there, uh, the rest of the game on the bike in the tunnel. It was walking gingerly when I saw him. So, uh, yeah, I, I think this kind of puts into question uh, his availability for Friday based on what we saw. Uh, but we'll learn more, you know, in the next couple of days on John Morant's availability going forward, going forward as far as that goes. And speaking of availability, uh, what about Zach Eadie's availability? Zach Eadie just came off one of the best games a rookie center's had in recent years, right? Right? And then he comes back doesn't play a lot against the Lakers. We're going to talk about that here next on Locked On Grizzlies. But before we get to that, today's episode is brought to you by Skims. Look, let's talk to the men for a second because, look, Skims right now is the premier place to go get your new underwear. Some of you haven't had a, a, a good underwear date update in a while in that drawer. And Skims is where you need to go to get that update done right now. Because look, me personally, when I found out about Skims and they were making underwear for men, because I had heard about them for a while, you know, uh, from the women. And my girlfriend said, you know what? I'm going to buy you some Skims. And, 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 and let's see if you like them. And, and when I got my first pair of Skims, I, I feel how comfortable they are. And I knew that net men should get involved with wearing more skins. Skims now offers men's underwear, and I'm telling you, it's worth the hype. You need to go check it out right now. And it honestly, look, it's putting others to shame. They hit you right at the th at the thigh, and they're gonna stay there. That's the key. There's no move around. They don't bag out. They don't give you, you know, the 5 p.m. wedgie or anything like that. It's just a box of briefs. The guys like it's simple and easy. Go take advantage of this right now. All you got to do is shop Skims Men at skims.com. Let them know that we sent you now. After you place your order, select podcast in the survey and select our show in the drop down menu that follows. And if you're looking for the perfect gifts for the whole family, Skims just launched their biggest holiday shop ever. So also that's available at skims.com. So make sure you take advantage of that. Zach Eady played 15 minutes against the Los Angeles Lakers. I think it was 14:43 exactly, and um, it's puzzling, puzzling enough for me to ask after the game, what's going on uh, with the minute situation. And we haven't touched on this uh, in in the first segment, and I want to make sure now, since we're uh, kind of into the coaching portion of the show, uh, everyone, you know, just. Be sure to send, you know, your prayers out to the family of Taylor Jenkins. I'm definitely Taylor Jenkins. Uh, you and your family are my players as well. Uh, Taylor Jenkins is dealing with a, a death in his family right now, which caused him to miss the Los Angeles Lakers game. In his place, uh, Tomas Isalo, uh, Grizzlies assistant coach, a lead assistant coach who was hired uh, this past offseason, uh, was the acting head coach against the Los Angeles Lakers. And before the game, Isalo basically said that, you know, the Grizzlies would stick to their same patterns uh, that they kind of, uh, you know, played before uh, Taylor Jenkins had to go on his leave of absence. So the patterns pretty much did look similar. You know, there was a couple things, you know, with the, the John Morant injuries, fouls here and there, um, and then the pace of the game, and plus who's playing well, which we'll get to in a second. All of that factors in to how much guys play. So I think the fans, you see, okay, Zach Eady, 25-12, four blocks against the Brooklyn Nets. Boom, throw him out there on the floor 
for a bunch of time against the Los Angeles Lakers. Let him continue to build on that performance because in that game, he looked like the bona fide rookie of the year. He looked like a guy who could be a forceful, dominant center in the future in the NBA. But what we saw against the Lakers was a guy that played 14 minutes. And I asked after the game, and I'm going to get to the answer that Isalo gave. You know, I said, well, what was the reasoning behind Zach Eady only playing as much time as he did? Because if you watched him in that first quarter, he was dominating. I think he had like 4.6 rebounds. Uh, no, he may not have had six rebounds in the first quarter, but he had two offensive rebounds on the first possession. I think he had four uh, rebounds, but he was – you could, he was going to get a double-double. Zach, he plays more minutes. Add another double-double to the list after the one he just had. Uh, he was well on his way to that. So I asked, you know, about that, you know, uh, the focus on other players, I guess you would say, in this case. And here's what Isalo said. He said, if you look at the game overall, Jay Huff gave us some huge minutes with the shooting again and his ability to stretch the floor and pull out the rim protectors from underneath the basket. And this opens up the game a lot for us. Then we had BC, who played one of his best games so far. It was really dynamic. I think it's also reflected in his plus minus. He was plus 16 today on the minutes on the floor. We were making good runs. So it's nothing away from Zach. He's been taking strides, and we just feel like we have three very different types of options for that big spot. It's a real strength that we can do it in this type of unit approach. Some nights, he's going to play more. He dominated the game in Brooklyn. Today he played a little bit less, but overall I think everybody's very happy with his development and how he's progressing. Some of you are going to hear that and say, oh, I don't want to hear that. Play Zach Eady. I hear that, and I say I get it. It makes perfect sense to me, and I'm about to outline all the reasons why. But I'll start with this, because I, I know everyone wants to see Zach Eady play as much as possible. But if he's coming out of the game and the other guys are playing well, what's the problem? I don't see the problem in that case scenario. If there have been times earlier this season, because I've challenged this as well. Like, this is not something that I haven't challenged. Even if, again, shout out to the everydayers, because you know I've asked this question to Taylor Jenkins probably three or four times already about Zach Eady's minutes. But what I want to hit on here is the fact that if you take Zach Eady out of the game and he's only playing 15 minutes, there better be another guy who's playing really good basketball. And the Grizzlies had two of them in this game. Brandon Clark's stats don't just directly show it, but as Isalo said, plus 16 in 19 minutes. That was the second highest plus minus on the Grizzlies. You know who had the highest? Jaron Jackson Jr. Do I need to tell you about the Jaron Jackson Jr. Brandon Clark two man? Uh, I don't. I don't think I do. Two man net ratings. That has always been over the last four or five years been one of the highest rated two-man net ratings on the Grizzlies roster consistently every single season. Brandon Clark and Jaron Jackson Jr. play well together. In this case, I was you watch the game. Jaron Jackson Jr. was starting off on LeBron James. LeBron James would try to, to bring the big uh, to set a screen. And in this case, the other big who's coming off of you know, the screen is, is Brandon Clark, and he's switching that. So they're switching uh, defensively which makes it easier uh, for them to just pretty much man-to-man -man guard guys. Uh, simpler, I guess, it would, not easier, simpler. And they have a lot of success in doing that. And that doesn't even go into effect how their offensive games uh, mesh and balance each other out. But Brandon Clark played well. Jay Huff, 11 points. I mean, he knocked down a couple threes, three three-pointers in this game. The other shot that he made was a putback reverse dunk that came during a big Grizzlies run that kind of was breaking that when they were breaking the game open. So I said Jalen, I mean Jay Jay Huff, 11 points in 14 minutes. Brandon Clark plus in plus 16 in 19 minutes. Neither one of them were bad. So this the decision is justifiable in this case. 
I know people want to see Zach Eadie get a, a longer run. And my message to you is it's going to happen. He's a rookie. He's learning his way. They're meshing him in. It's okay. It happens. I'm sure later on in the season, he's going to get more extended windows. Uh, but the thing about the Grizzlies roster and what Isalo kind of touched on a little bit is they have three different types of centers. And those guys will be advantages in certain matchups. There's going to be certain teams the Grizzlies play against where Jay Huff and his ability to stretch the floor is going to open things up for John Moran and Desmond Bang to really destroy teams on the offensive end. And defense leads going to be able to protect the rim enough to hold it down on that end. There's going to be other games where you need someone like Brandon Clark, who's very mobile, who's who can uh, be very effective in the short role on, on offense, and who can switch everything defensively and simplify things for you on that end. And there's going to be other games, like when you went against the Brooklyn Nets, you're going against a smaller team who's got one center pretty much and Nick Claxton, and – you just it's barbecue chicken time. It's give give your seven foot four guy the ball and let him cook. So it's going to be Zach Eadie's games, but you got to understand, especially early in the season, there are going to be these sporadic moments where he's playing 18, 19 minutes. The only thing I want to see when that's happening is if Zach Eadie's playing 16, 17, 18 minutes, there needs to be another big who's having a really good game to justify that decision. If Zach Eadie is having a really good game, and then another big comes in and stinks it up and is still playing more minutes than him. Well, guess what? I'm going to be on the same side as y'all. I'm going to call that out and I'm going to address it, you know, when we're talking to the Grizzlies in the post game. But if Jay Huff is coming off the bench, giving you 11 points, three three pointers, a put back dunk, Brandon Clark's playing alongside of Jaron Jackson Jr., plus 16 and 19 minutes. I'm not going to complain about that. I don't think you should complain about that. I honestly think it's kind of selfish in a way because you want to see Zach Eady get all the numbers and whatnot. You're kind of forgetting that you got a couple other guys uh, that are really productive. But that's neither here nor there. I don't think it's stunting his growth as a player. It's nine games in an 82-game season. Zach Eady, again, has set himself week by week. He feels himself growing to different levels. So the progression is naturally going to come for him. He's going to get more playing time. He's going to get more opportunities. And you're going to start to see uh, in certain matchups, he's going to you know get close to 30 minutes in a game and things like that. But you're also going to see certain matchups. They're going to say, you know what? This is Brandon Clark's game. And that's nothing new with the Grizzlies. That actually used to happen when Steven Adams was here. It happened when Jonas uh, Valanciunas was here as well. So this is, this is nothing out of the ordinary from that standpoint. I do think, you know, the minutes thing is is puzzling, right? Like one game he plays a lot, but when Isalo explained it in that way, and Taylor Jenkins has kind of you know said said something similar in in so many words, but I think Isalo broke it down to a whole another level. You know, basically touching on Jay Huff and Brandon Clark and what they did in that game, that clears it up for me. So it's simple. If you put Zach Eady in a game for 19, 20 minutes as a starter. I better look at that stat sheet and say, oh, Brandon Clark must have 15 points or he must have a plus 15 plus minus or Jay Huff must have uh, 11 points off the bench and knock down three three pointers or whatever the case may be. And that happened in this game. No complaint from me as long as that's the case. Coming up here next on Locked on Grizzlies, we got to talk about Jalen Wells, the other rookie. Uh, he, he's been playing really good basketball, and I think he, he deserves uh, some attention here. Let's talk about – what he's brought to the table here coming up next on Locked on Grizzlies. Before we get to that, today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Look, get ready to tackle the NFL action with FanDuel America because it's America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers can bet $5 and get $150 in bonus bets if you win that bet. The FanDuel Sportsbook app gives you everything you need to place live bets on the NFL in one place. So when you get a hunch in the middle of the game, you can just go check out the latest stats or you can, you can go look at the live play by play so much more on the same page where you place your bets. Go take advantage of this right now. Just visit FanDuel.com to join and then you'll get started with $150 now in bonus bets. If you win your first $5 bet, all you got to do is win a $5 bet. You get $150 in bonus bets. Go take advantage of that right now. FanDuel.com. 
Never waste a hunch and make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sports book partner of the NFL. Coming up here next on Locked on Grizzlies, we got to talk about Jalen Wells. Let's talk about Jalen Wells. Stay tuned for that. Grizzlies rookie Jalen Wells had another good game, and I just always got to keep going back to the confidence of this dude because uh, there were a couple sequences. I think he made a shot over LeBron James. LeBron James kind of patted him on the head as a kind of a, you know, tippy cap type thing to him. But it came right after uh, LeBron had scored on Jalen Wells. So he was going back at uh, LeBron. But there was another situation that stood out to me uh, as well. And uh, I forget what quarter it was in. I, I want to say it was in the third quarter. It was during a, a stretch where the Grizzlies were pulling away. And I'm sitting there. I see Jalen Hill, Jalen Wells f- shoot a three pointer, and then he points his hands back at the Lakers bench. Point at the Lakers bench before the shot even goes in. He's pointing at the Lakers bench. So it, it, was, it was some real Steph Curry vibes going on. But he, he shoots the ball and he points at the Lakers bench. Boom, the shot goes in. Then he looks over at the Lakers bench. So I'm gonna let me check Mark there. I'm gonna ask him about that after the game because I know there's more to it. So you know, in the, in the NBA, uh, it's kind of a common phrase when usually it's 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 reserved for when non shooters shoot the basketball. Uh, but I guess you know the Lakers players haven't really got the scouting report on Jalen Wells yet. But Jalen Wells shoots the ball, and you know uh, the Lakers players just scream. You know, they say the one a word in front of it, but they scream no, nah, basically. And uh when they said that, Jalen Wells heard it, points over there while the ball's in air mid-flight, knocks the shot down. Really confident dude. Really confident dude. I think that just was another moment that showcases and kind of highlights of the confidence that he plays with. But overall, again, 20 points, three rebounds, one assist, five of seven on three-pointers in this game for Jalen Wells. 28 minutes, he was plus eight overall. How do you take this guy out of the rotation? That's my question. I know Luke Kennard's back. Vince Williams is a couple weeks away, and everyone knows, well, most of you should know that, you know, I'm very, I'm a very big proponent of Vince Williams seeing the floor. He should not ride the bench around here. I don't, I don't care who's available. But – the numbers are going to start to get deep in the backcourt on the perimeter. And it would be easy to say, oh, yeah, you know, Jalen Wells, he's the rookie. Go to the bench. Go, you know, learn, take some more reps, and continue to grow. That would be the easy thing. But what if that's not what happens? And right now when you watch Jalen Wells play, you're seeing efficiency. You're seeing productivity. You're seeing it on both ends of the floor. I can't take that guy to rotation. And I'm always the one to say this, so I got to challenge myself on this as well. I always say, okay, if you you say you're not gonna you you're gonna add someone to a rotation or you're not gonna take somebody out of a rotation, that's affecting someone's minutes. And in this case, it's not affecting Scottie Pippen Jr.'s. I believe when Vince Williams is healthy, it's not going to affect his. The only other guy in there is Luke Kennard. And there's a question to be had. I don't, I, 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 for one, I think Luke is one of the best shooters in the world. He's constantly displayed that while he's been in Memphis. But he becomes expendable in a way, uh, not necessarily from a trade standpoint and all that, but just uh, Jalen Wells has already shown that he can be a solid shooter and play competitive defense against some really good players uh, in the NBA. So uh, keep an eye on Jalen Wells. I I think he's been one of the biggest surprises for the Grizzlies at this point. Uh, We're starting to see him get some rookie of the year love. Is it too early? Is that possible? Is that something that we could see here a little bit more in Memphis? Uh, Look, I I think – People were saying things like, oh, you know, rookie Desmond Bain come to mind. And I'm telling you, when I watch Jalen Wells, there's a lot of poise to this guy. And uh, it's been a treat to watch him. Really looking forward to seeing what the next steps, what's the next level 
of evolution for the game of Jalen Wells. Thank you guys for tuning in to Locked on Grizzlies on today. And remember, your favorite podcast now has a newsletter. Introducing the Locked on Grizzlies daily newsletter It's the one stop for ultimate team and league coverage delivered right to your inbox. Sign up for free now at LockedOnDaily.com. That's LockedOnDaily.com and start your day with the all-new free Locked on Grizzlies newsletter. Coming up here next on Locked on Grizzlies, we're going to give you an injury update in the next show on John Morant. We should know more uh, on his status. After that, the Grizzlies aren't practicing today, so it's going to be a rest day. But we'll know more from an injury standpoint, and we'll preview the next game, which is at home against the Washington Wizards. On paper, you probably say, oh, it's the Washington Wizards. But, it, hey, they got some talent over there. We'll talk about it much more in our next episode. But until then, thank you guys for tuning in to Locked on Grizzlies with me on today. Remember that Locked on Grizzlies is free and available wherever you get your podcast. I'm DeMichael Cole, and we'll see you on Locked on Grizzlies.